Hi, this is John with Flat 6 Motorsports. Today we're going to talk about tuning solutions for your Porsche Macan. Stay tuned. A question we get asked quite often by customers is what solution is right for me? Now, we'll talk about that in just a second, but why in the first place would you want to tune your Porsche Macan? Well, the nice thing about turbocharged vehicles is they leave a lot of headroom to get more power out of the vehicle. And the Macan especially, even though it is a Porsche and it is performance minded, it's going to have a little bit of a drawback relative to you know, a higher performance uh, oriented Porsche. Now tuning really helps take care of that. So tuning is probably going to be the best bang for your buck if you want to make your car go faster. Now fundamentally there are two different types of ways you can tune the Macan. One would be flash tuning and the other would be a piggyback tune. Let's talk about flash tuning first. So flash tuning, what that does is it overwrites your existing ECU with a new file. That file typically is only going to modify, it's going to copy a lot of the factory tables that are going to be referenced. It's not going to mess with you know, any safety type things, um, typically not even the stability control unless the tuner specifically does something there. Um, right now there's only three options if you want to flash tune your Macan. The first would be Cobb's access port. The second would be GIAC. They will offer flash tuning services. However, it's not supported by an OBD, so you would have to actually send your ECU to them, and they would uh, do a process called bench flashing, where they basically take apart your ECU and flash the chip directly. Um, because there's not a lot of OBD support right now, uh, there's not a lot of tuners offering flash tuning. There's a company called CMD that makes hardware um, that some tuners use that they can unlock some of the tuning capability of the Macan, um, but that's going to be a very localized thing and there's, there's really not that many reputable people working on the Macan right now. Um, so those are really the only options you have for flash tuning. Now flash tuning is great because it's probably the most optimal way you're going to make power out of your Macan. However, the drawbacks are anytime you flash your ECU, it's going to leave an event that's stored on your ECU that says this ECU was manipulated. And Typically, the, the problem and the risk that you run into um, for some people while they're concerned about flash tuning is that if you ever take your vehicle back in for service or warranty, the dealer is absolutely going to be able to see that the EC was overwritten. Now, you with Cobb, Cobb's access port, you can flash back to your stock map, and I'd recommend doing that if you ever have a Cobb access port before you go into a dealer, um, just to not raise suspicion. However, I think as long as you're a reasonable person and you're not doing anything crazy to your vehicle, the risk is fairly low, maybe a little overblown, but uh, you're going to have to determine that for yourself, your appetite of risk and, and how you think about that. So that's flash tuning. Let's also talk about piggyback tuning because piggyback tuning, the nice piece of that is if you, you can remove it, it's plug and play. It's an external computer that hooks into the existing sensory, but you can also unplug it and it's like it was never there. You'll never see an event on the ECU, so it'd be very hard for a dealer to understand that anything was ever done. And that's basically the main benefit of a, a piggyback. That, and they're t traditionally a little bit lower cost, so a little cheaper. And then another benefit is if you ever do want to remove it, you can sell it to somebody else and they can plug it right into their vehicle, where flash tuning typically will marry to your ECU or lock to the VIN of your ECU. So the resale piece of it is very challenging because you have to either unmarry it or in some cases you just can't even sell that to anybody. Um, so you'll never get any value back out of that. Now let's talk back, let's go, sorry, go back to piggyback tuning and talk about some of the options there. Uh, there's quite a few on the market. There's uh, VR tuned, there's uh, Ren chip, there's Race chip, uh, and chip work are kind of the, the big names that are around chip tuning uh, with a piggyback system for the Macan. Um, and there's the Macan S, the Turbo, and the 2.0, and there's some variances between them with who offers what for who. Uh, there's also the GTS, which has the, the least amount of support at this point. So the, the, how a piggyback works is it's an external computer, uh, so it has a microprocessor on board, and then you hook it up to about either three or four sensors, depending on the vehicle. And what it's gonna do is it's going to basically uh, you hear trick the ECU, what it's doing is it's sending a dynamic command back to the ECU, basically telling it that the sensor is doing something different. Now these are all calibrated, so don't think of it as it's, it's some smoke and mirrors. It's, it's actually programmed by smart engineers that are, are doing this. So 
uh, what their main goal is to accomplish is make more power safely. So they're going to try to bring more pressure through the turbocharger and increase boost and then also add some fuel so that it can be safely uh, taken to redline. Now, the, the downfall of a piggyback is it's not quite as optimal as flash tuning. The reason being is that it's an external device and it has to, it, there takes time, so there is latency between the sensor going back to the ECU and the ECU reacting in a way. Uh, now that ECU reacts in a way that's very predictable and that's why engineers can unlock power with piggybacks. However, there is a little latency, so the smoothness of the tune is gonna be uh, typically a little less refined than flash tuning. And also, typically, it's not going to make as much power as flash tuning because there are limits to the hardware of the, uh, the piggyback itself. Um, now, the ones for the Macan make plenty of power. I don't think people want to go much further beyond that uh, without any upgrades anyways, uh, as far as cooling and, um, you know, just really how far you want to push the motor on uh, kind of stock internals. So, um, the piggyback solutions that exist, I think, make great power. And you have to look at the piggybacks as what, what hardware and is the calibration dialed in correctly. <clears throat> uh, what analogy I did want to use about the piggyback systems is, think about it about 10 years ago when you had a computer and you had a hard drive, an internal hard drive that's connected to the motherboard, how fast it is to save a file versus an external hard drive. There would be a little bit of a delay, but technology is really caught up, so if you're watching, you probably might not even know what I'm talking about. but. That's kind of the analogy I'd use to think about a piggyback, is it's going to take a little bit of time for it to, to react and send signals, but technology has evolved to a point where it's not really as noticeable as it used to be. So you'll hear tales of people that had you know, piggybacks from five or ten years ago and just believe that the, the technology and the hardware has evolved to a point where you have pretty sophisticated microprocessors within those units. Now the next episode we're going to talk about the different options for piggyback units because I think it's a popular option for people who are concerned about warranty, um, that are you know not seriously going to modify the car, they just want to explore having more power. It gives them a great option to, to enjoy the, the power for a little bit and if, if it's not their cup of tea they can always sell that and get you know a decent amount of money back out of their investment. So that's why piggybacks typically are more popular with newer vehicles and flash tuning becomes more popular. It's just, vehicles uh, you know worked away out of warranty. Now we're going to talk about you know the, the benefits of different piggybacks versus each other and then we're going to do some performance testing in our third episode. But the next one will focus mostly on the hardware and how you can tell a good piggyback from a bad piggyback I guess is probably the best way to put it. Now all the flash tuning options I think are great. I think there's some great piggyback uh, solutions as well that I'm happy to talk about. So stay tuned, we're going to come back with episode 2 and, and do a deep dive. And then episode 3, we're actually going to plug these, all these piggybacks in and we're going to show you some performance numbers with them, give you some driving impressions of how they are driving on the street. Um, and then also an install guide. It's very easy on the Macan. Uh, it's three sensors. They're all on top of the engine, so it's simple to install. You can do it in five minutes, but we'll show you step by step how you do it, regardless of which system you go with. So thank you for your time. Stay tuned. Episode 2 will come out next week. Thanks.